Deco Hot Study. The basic understanding of the cohort study is below. First is the course of a study, which in this case is forward or prospective, and it can also be backward called historical or retrospective with respect to time. So from the population you identify the cohort, which are people or individuals who share some common attribute and are without the disease or outcome. Then you group the cohort according to their exposure status, classified as exposed and unexposed group. Finally, you follow up the cohort members to see the appearance of an outcome or disease and relate this phenomena with the exposure of interest. So this is the snapshot of a cohort study required before critically appraising it. So first question would be to check if both groups or individuals are free of the disease or outcome at the start of the study or at the exposure level. You could explore the methods section to see details of the sample enrollment, inclusion and exclusion criteria and description of variables. Are the two groups enrolled from a similar population and how alike they are? The critical analysis would be at the selected cohort level. Both exposed and unexposed groups should be as comparable as possible in all features apart from their exposure grade. This could be checked if the researcher has mentioned a well-defined inclusion and exclusion criteria. So elements like gender, age, race, ethnicity, stage of the disease, disease type, previous treatment and the existing medical, emotional or psychological health conditions are all considered as a selection criteria and it varies from one individual study to the next. So the cohort should be as similar in these aspects as possible. How was the exposure measured? How the exposure is measured or calculated should be clearly defined. Exposure measurements like interviews, questionnaires, behavior record, biological measurements, other records should be similar when assigning people to an exposed or unexposed group. You should check if the validity and reliability of the exposure measurement is given. For example, did the researcher mention criteria on validity, which entails that a gold standard is accessible against which the exposure measure can be matched. Reliability, on the other hand, is the repeatability. So investigate information like intra or inter-observer reliability and their correlation coefficients that should be present in good quality studies. Next question is, how was the outcome measured? Any outcome or disease should be diagnosed according to an established diagnostic principles or definitions. Self-reported measures or subjective judgment would compromise the validity of the study and could result in under or over-reporting of the outcome and needs to be checked. Now validity and reliability of the outcome measurement. Similarly, details of how it is measured, for example, the use of validated instruments and replicability that include educated and well-trained staff are the important aspects of the process that needs to be appraised to maximize the validity and repeatability of the study. Confounding factors Just to recap, a confounder is something which is independently associated with the exposure and independently associated with the outcome of interest. So, look for potential confounders, description and strategies used in the study and how did they handle it. Confounders could include related exposures, clinical, demographic and other baseline characteristics. Both comparison groups must be evaluated for possible confounders, otherwise the direction of a study results will be affected. Details of approaches to deal with confounders both at the design and the analysis state should be given. This could include methods such as stratifying, matching and the usage of multivariate regression analysis. Length of time and outcomes. The follow-up time depends upon several factors and therefore it should reasonably be long enough for the outcomes to establish. 
the research problem, nature of outcome, characteristics of the population of relevance, and the exposure all assist in defining the duration of the length of the study. Details of efforts like a thorough literature search, contact with experts and clinicians also help in determining a suitable duration of follow-up. Follow-up and loss to follow-up. It is encouraged that a greater proportion of 80% or more participants are followed up and a dropout rate is kept to the minimum of 5% or less. If the dropout rate is 20% or greater, it can considerably impact the validity of the study. Though in real-life situations, observational studies that are conducted over an extended period experiences a large dropout rate than expected. So this needs to be taken into account. When there is a higher dropout rate, the choice to continue or discard the study depends upon reasons which should be mentioned in the study. Also whether the dropout rates are analogous between the exposed versus unexposed groups should also be addressed. Details of efforts made to follow up members that dropped out could be seen as a marker of a good conducted study. The availability of justifiable, clear explanation of why participants were dropped out needs to be interrogated. Lack of such clarification makes the study invalid and difficult to interpret. Approaches to discourse incomplete follow-up To avoid the possibility of selection bias, it is essential that the outcomes of the cohort are evaluated before some participants depart from the study for different reasons. It is also important that the unequal follow-up is taken into consideration by adjusting the differences in the length of follow-up periods in the analysis. Details of relative measures like weights that utilize person years at risk should also be mentioned in the study. A statistical analysis Details of the analytical techniques like stratification or multivariate models and confounders based on specific assumptions should be mentioned under the methodology section of the study. Good luck with your review.